In 2017, I started a journey looking at what do healings and miracles have to do with today uh, in conjunction with scripture. And I sat on those findings for about a year. But then recently when Todd White came out against his uh, Word of Faith movement, it really encouraged me to share what I found in scripture to be true. Now, this is a confusing topic for a lot of us because in the Old Testament, you see tons of miracles in the New Testament and the Gospels, the Book of Acts, you see the early church engaged in a lot of miracles and healings. And you even see Paul talk about healings to the early church and giving instructions in how to exercise uh, different gifts of the Spirit. And so a lot of us are kind of confused. But I love what John Piper says. There are fewer miracles in the Bible than you probably think, and there are more miracles today than you probably know. And I think that really sheds some light on this issue of miracles. But we see a lot of bad examples of charlatans and fakes that are using these healings in the wrong way. And so what I decided to do was to look at what scripture has to say, specifically the book of Mark. And I chose the book of Mark because the book of Mark has a lot of action and immediacy. And so I felt like that would be probably the best place to see where Christ uh, healed and where miracles happen. And what I found was pretty interesting. Now I share this with a lot of fear and trembling because I don't want to rip off anybody from experience of the Holy Spirit, but with my own experiences of seeing the Word of Faith movement in action and also the numerous warnings in Scripture, I really felt like it was important to look into and to also discuss. So what does the book of Mark have to say about healings? What does it show? I, I really think that the verse that shares the most about the essence of healings is Mark 138 where Christ says, let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And so we really look at how Christ came, not just simply to preach a social gospel or just simply to heal people, but to really bring the gospel and the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Now what's interesting is that teachings was really a hallmark of his ministry. And you see 14 times that Christ is constantly conveying that it's his teachings that are important not just simply these healings. So the question can be, why did Christ heal? And I think that in the book of Mark, we see two reasons. One was to bear witness to his authority, and the other one was because of his compassion. So I saw six places where healing really was to bear witness to his authority. So it wasn't just the healing was important itself, but that it had a purpose to really elevate his message and to show the authority of his message to the skeptics. But we also see how healing was a sign of compassion, whether he healed the man of leprosy in Mark 1.41, whether he healed the man with the withered hand in Mark 3.5, feeding the large crowds a couple of times was because of compassion in chapter 6, 34, 8, 2, and then also the son that was possessed in 9, 22. And I think that shows actually the greatest example of Christ's compassion, because when he saw a father with just such heartache that his son was being demon possessed, he healed him. And we see in that section where Christ had compassion. However, we see that his healings actually were more of a distraction than anything than just simply bearing to his authority. We see in 145 of Mark where crowds were just constantly engrossed with his miracles and not allowing him to teach, not allowing him to share the gospel, and he was not able to move about uh, freely. In chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus had to withdraw from the crowds. And we have numerous examples of that, where he had to go away from the crowds. Chapter 7, verse 32 through 33. The Pharisees were constantly looking for a sign as well. And so these signs and these healings actually uh, at times became a distraction or a stumbling block to Christ's message because people were focusing more on the healing versus the healer. They were focusing more on the gift than the giver. And it's interesting how Christ multiple times told the people who were healed not to share that they were healed because Christ knew that it was going to be a distraction. We see in Mark 134, 540, 521, 826 examples of that where Christ told the people not to share about his healing because if Christ was here on a healing circus then he would have wanted to get that message out but it shows that Christ was really about the gospel uh, more than just simply the physical healing but about the spiritual healing and we see that in the book of Mark so I think that it's really important to notice that 
we need to not focus on the gifts of healing, but focus on the gospel. But when there's a need uh, to exercise the gift of healing, to have that compassion, but not just a compassion that heals a person physically, but a compassion that represents the whole gospel and actually brings people to repentance and restores their soul and their spirit so that they can enter the kingdom of heaven. And I think that that's where uh, Todd's white example is really important because he started to realize that his miracles and the word of faith movement that he was a part of was actually a distraction. Now, you might not know who Todd White is. Uh, there was a movie that came out uh, called Holy Spirit. And interesting movie. Um, there were things that I appreciated about it, and there were things that I was skeptical about. And the biggest thing that I was skeptical about was where Todd White was healing a man, I believe it was in a Walmart, and the camera asks why he didn't share the gospel with that man that he had supposedly healed. And Todd's White Todd White's answer was that he is just a part of planting seeds, that he does not believe that his ministry is seeing people restored uh, spiritually, just restored physically, and that somebody else will come along the way and that the Holy Spirit will use them. Um, but that's kind of a, a cop-out, and Todd White actually just recently uh, admitted to that, that he had missed it uh, completely and that there's people that he had supposedly healed but really didn't get a chance for the gospel. And so that's where he has landed with this issue of the gospel versus healings. So I applaud Todd White for his conversion experience. I like some of the quotes that he's been saying. Healing is a benefit of the gospel, but not the reason for it. Uh, God is holy and will enforce his justice. Don't take the miracle out of the gospel. Grace is a miracle. Humility will make you feel like you just met Jesus again when he prunes you. And so I think there's a great work that's being done in Todd White's heart right now. Uh, apparently he had read Spurgeon, he had read some works by Ray Comfort, and he started to realize that uh, he needs to present the whole gospel, not just simply the healings. So kind of in conclusion, I think that whenever you see the gift of healings, uh, that it should be motivated by compassion and that the end result should always be the gospel. That it shouldn't just simply be the healing of the person physically, but also that the sins are forgiven of the person. As Christ did with the paralytic man who was brought from the ceiling. He not only healed him physically, but he also healed him spiritually. And I think this also goes with social justice movements, that if you are just simply about social justice and about social gospel and helping people in society and correcting different injustices, uh, it should be done out of a gospel heart. And also that it should be done with a full gospel, that it's not just about healing the situation at hand, it's the whole person, their spiritual, not just simply their physical, that is addressed. For what is it if you gain the whole world but lose your soul?